I joined the British Royal Navy in 1940. I was born in Scotland, of course, and um, joined the Navy. And we went down to um, Portsmouth, home base, to do a um, check on our qualifications. I wanted to be in the engine room of the Royal, of one of the ships. I took about the six-week course, took about eight weeks, because every night at 2 a.m., we had the joy of getting up and going to air raid shelters. And the bombing stopped about 4 o'clock in the morning, so that kind of exp expanded that. Pretty soon, though, we got down to uh, uh, Liverpool to pick up the HMS Ark Royal. Uh, I was asked to tell my story about the Ark Royal especially. At D-Day, I was in, in Casablanca for about three and a half months there. The ship got rammed, and we were repairing it. So I was not part of the D-Day uh, program. Anyhow, we got on the Ark Royal at Liverpool. It was shining bright, so it was really going. And from there to Gibraltar. Well, Gibraltar was our home base, and we did convoys uh, in Gibral in uh, the Mediterranean and uh, outside in the Atlantic uh, from time to time. Kept us busy. Uh, we would... Um, take the ships down, take the merchant ships down to Malta, wait around, because that base had to be supplied. It was a very important base for North Africa operations. The, um, there were several incidents on that, uh, on that run. One in particular was the, where we had a very important cargo. We had to wait around and keep, uh, keep the Germans and the Italians occupied while they unload the ships. Uh, you talk about uh, large uh, numbers of shells and so forth. We had that happen to the Art Royal, but we ne were never hit. We had torpedoes go to the right to us, to the left of us, in front of us, bombs coming down, um, firing from the Italian shores, submarines. Yeah, it was noisy. Very noisy. I was in the control room most of the time, and we had somewhat like 300 gauges there. And with all that disturbance in the water, with the gauges were jumping back and forth. And of course, we had to keep control on what was going on. We got back to Gibraltar safely, and the ships got back safely. And we did two or three more runs there. Now, uh, one, um, another run that we did and of course we were coming back and I was going to celebrate with a few friends from the ship my 21st birthday. However, we got in, we got in about Gibraltar about four o'clock and we had to make a quick turnaround. About five o'clock they said, all shore leave canceled. Well, we had to stock up and get out again. We went west this time, not as far west as the USA but once we got beyond Gibraltar, the issue came up. The Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, had issued an edict, sink the Bismarck. Well, that was exciting. That really was exciting. Uh, we, we took part in that, and of course, we, uh, being aircraft carrier, we kept track of the ship as much as possible. It eluded us sometime, the Bismarck, there's a photograph of it here. It was just uh, very lucky. It had been attacked once and a little damage, but one of our planes did get a torpedo in the rudder system. This really disabled the Bismarck. It could make about seven knots, but that was going around in circles. So it was a very easy target for the cruisers and battleships to come in and finish it off. Well, we think finish it off, because I think they had 27,000 hits at that time. But the thing was still floating, and the Germans did not want it taken in as a prize. I believe they sank the Bismarck themselves to keep it from being taken in. They had now have found the Bismarck and done various tests on it. Well, that was okay, and um, we got, um, 
we got back to Gibraltar and we did a few more a few more convoys that Malta took a lot of equipment to keep it going. One other issue that we uh, trip that we made we were coming back into Gibraltar having uh, having done a trip to Malta and at four o'clock everything was called off the action stations and so forth and I had just finished the afternoon shift in the bo in the engine room about five minutes later I, as I always did I visited the head as soon as I got off shift so I know the time when the torpedo hit very closely five minutes after four or 1650 hours well, that torpedo hit a right amidships, right in the electrical discharge room from a U-boat which was laying off the coast of Spain in their waters. That's why the destroyers couldn't pick it up. It got fired one shot, and it got the very, very good targets that the electrical discharge. Now, at that time, the Ark Royal and many of the ships did not have diesel generators or any support equipment. And um, everything was more or less black. Engines shut down, pumps shut down. And we were told then, uh, we assumed an 18 degree list at that time, and we were told to abandon ship again at six, about six o'clock. We, we were taken off onto another destroyer and then the call went around for 100 qualified volunteers to go back aboard the HMS Ark Royal and see if they could stabilize the list. Well, we did that. I was one of the volunteers, and my particular job was the was a steam generator in order to get the pumps going. They did get a boiler going, and um, then I started the generator up about 7.30, I think, close to that. And we got the pumps going, and we were able to kind of keep the list at 18, 20 degrees. Uh, and about an hour later, they sent a tug in from Gibraltar, and we uh, hitched up to that and got some more power so we could start the, some of the fans. Now, in the engine room, and you're running without fans, it is dreadfully hot. Very, very hot. We were then going about four knots, four to five knots, and the RTA for Gibraltar, which wasn't too far away, was eight o'clock in the morning. Uh, that went along quite well, and we were doing doing a good, uh, a good job of making Gibraltar. However, at 2 o'clock in the morning, the order came from Admiralty to start the port engine. They wanted to steam into Gibraltar under their own power, no tugs or anything else. I objected, but you know, I was just about that much on the scale. I, I just said, no, you can't do that. But they did it. Well, it just started, I saw the steam pressure going down from 3.30, down, 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 down. And we finally, were, it, was, it was hopeless. So around 4 o'clock, another, another abandoned ship. This time, of course, it was much, much more difficult because the uh, ship at this time was in the high 20 degree list. I was 100 yards. I didn't make the sprint in very good time, so but I did get off. It was hand over hand, all the way up to the forward part of the ship where they were uh, going, uh, taking off again. I reached up there about 4.30 in the morning and just had to, well, I, actually I, I walked down the side of the ship at 4.30 in the morning holding the rope, then when it was time to get off the destroyer, uh, I climbed down the rope and basically fell into uh, fell into the the uh, bench which was waiting for me in the wardroom. Well, at that time, 
I heard them say one more to go. So basically, I was the second and last person off the Ark Raw before it went down. By the way, we only lost one person out of 1,650 personnel uh, through the torpedoing. We didn't lose anybody else. They had a few injuries where people got excited and jumped off and things like that, but uh, we saved their lives. Around six o'clock, uh, I was awake, and Mr. Ritchie, the Ark Royal is going down now. I said, forget it. I was asleep. <laughs> Anyhow, I did get up a few minutes later, and I did get up and witness the last of the Ark Royal. <laughs>